So welcome back to Stringman Guitars. We have ourselves the, um, once again, the Fender, um, what did they call this model? I can't even remember what they called it. It's uh, made in Mexico, but it has the noiseless uh, pickups, the 20 dB boost, um, all the proper switching and everything, and it's a brand new guitar. It came from that uh, mega warehouse company out of uh, Indiana, and the problem is they they claim that they do a 55 point or so, 53 point some kind of so many points of inspection when you buy a guitar from them, like making sure it's set up, like making sure the string height's right, making sure the frets are level. Well, when you buy from there at Christmas, Christmas time, um, there's just too many orders for them to actually go through that and uh, do it right. So he wanted just a simple setup with a floating trim, and um, we did that. But even at more than 564 string height, there's still crazy buzz all over the fingerboard. So, um, rather than uh, him sending it back to this mega warehouse in Indiana to have them either fix it or replace it because it is new, um, he wants me to do it because he doesn't want to have to deal with the hassle of them either sending him something else that's not right or just going through the whole, whole ordeal again. So we're going to take it apart and we're going to make it right. So let's uh, unstring it. We'll take the neck off. While we're at it, we're going to put a tusk nut on this thing which is beyond me when you spend $7.99 for a guitar. I looked it up on the interwebs. That's how much they are selling these things for. Still are selling them for that much. When you spend $7.99 for an electric guitar, don't you think they should have some class and spend you extra, extra 35 cents for a tusk nut and install it correctly? No, we'll just stick with a plastic nut. After all, we have a floating trim. We don't want it to really work properly, do we? So, that's all I'm going to say about that. So, shame, shame, Fender. Shame, shame big mega store in Indiana for selling dude's wife his wife bought this for him for selling dude's wife a guitar and not doing your 55 or 53 or 52 or however many steps or point points check you're supposed to do on the guitars before they're shipped. But once again it was around Christmas and that's just when you run into volume that's what's going to happen. So he wants me to take care of it. I'll take care of it. No problem. So how are you guys doing? You still freezing where you're at? so sick of this weather. All the, all my guitar necks are all cattywampus because they don't know what to do. One day it's warm, the next day it's cold. Rains for a week so it gets real humid and it stops raining and it dries out. It's like a guitar yo-yo.
so cold that my hands are actually starting to cramp up. By the way, I love, absolutely love the color on this. And according to Dude, it does change light or color under sage lights. So that's pretty boss. Okay. Neck removal. Boy, that's tight. There we go. That is a tight pocket. And would you look at that? They left all kind of garbage in there. So we're going to take care of that too. A little bit of sandpaper to get some of that filler out of there because that's not letting the neck sit in there right. Put all my screws in the magnetic dish. Let's take a look. Long guitar scale. That's pretty flat right there. Get my um, little thin. Where's my? Ah, here we go. Get the thinnest. There we go. We shall see what we shall see. Sometimes the eye will deceive you. But if you try to slide your thinnest, your thinnest feeler gauge through there, and you don't go, then you probably have yourself a pert straight neck. Okay, well since we had string tension on it, we're going to let it sit and uh, let's see what time it is, 10.21, we are going to put, go ahead and score this, so this will come out of here. So, okay, we're going to let the neck set and let it acclimate to the conditions with no string tension on it, and we'll be back. Okay, everybody, we got our neck taped off, and we have got our black magic marker from Marks A Lot. Um, that we marked it all, and we are going to flatten out our frets. It's taken me two days to get this because of our weather changing uh, to get my neck whoop, wrong side my neck 
exactly straight. Get it straight, come back down, it's crooked. Ugh. So anyhow, um, it's been a long week trying to get this done for dude. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna bust off the top of the frets. I'm gonna use a couple passes with uh, 230 grit, then a couple passes with 330 grit. Then we're gonna crown it and shine it up, and we're gonna check with the fret rocker. And actually, um, just for the heck of it. Oh, right there. 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 Yeah. They are in the first three, six, um, seven frets or so. Um, found a bunch of spots that are high. So we're gonna take those off. You like my sound effects? And uh, we're gonna crown and polish them and hopefully get them back to do this weekend. Dude, I'm sorry it's taking me so long. We've been so busy. New pastor to church. Lots of work to do, no time to do it. Easter's coming, so it makes it an extra big deal. So I'm gonna peace out right now. Thank you again for checking out Stringman Guitars, and we'll be back. Thank you. Hey everybody, welcome back to Stringman Guitars. We've got ourselves a uh, Fender Deluxe Stratocaster, Mexican made, and We've got a 12-inch uh, radius on it, and uh, we've got some high frets, brand new guitar. So we're going to take our 220 grit on our bar, and we're going to use the weight of the bar, the sanding bar, to do the job. And we're just going to keep it even. marked all the frets so we should be able to see when we've got our high frets taken care of. the black ink is taken away we'll know that uh, we've reached our cruising altitude now we will know that we reached where we wanted to go as far as evening it out I'm starting to feel that there's now well, there's a couple more on this side but that'll go in a second low. Maybe it was 
those low frets as opposed to high frets. Black ink is gone. Yes. Okay. Yes, everybody, it has been a very, 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 very busy week. Alright. Let's see what Mr. Fret Rocker has to say about this. Yep, I think there's still a little bit more I want to take off of this side. Looks like about it. Alright. Now let's see what the front rocker, where is it? There it is. Let's see what they say about it. That one stops here. just amazing to me that this got out of the shop or out of the factory There's a little bit of a high one there it's 
amazing to me that this got out of the shop. And through the big box stores, so called 50 some point inspection. through their 55 point or 50 some odd point inspection. With it being this far off. You guys are better than this. That's why I never buy a new Guitar. Well, I don't buy new guitars. I buy, buy used guitars. Because chances are they work anyhow. And whatever showed up in there, and they were brand new, typically are going to be what you find. When you get them, unless somebody's already fix that. So where's my little sanding block? Hold on just a second. We're going to get our little sanding block. Hold on.
Okie dokie. We've got our neck finally level. A bunch of chasing down high frets. So now it's time to polish. So we'll start with the fret racers. Go 400, 600, 800, 1200. Um, and some uh, 4-aught steel wool. And we'll get out the Dremel with some Dremel with a, with some uh, silver polish and uh, finish this thing off because wow! All right, check back with you. Okay, We've done all of our um, Fred racers up to actually 2200. I failed to mention. And um, then we hit it with steel wool. Now we've got our um, silver cleaner on here. And we're going to use the old Dremel. I'm not going to put you through that noise, but uh, that's the next step. Okay. We've got her finished. Nice, uh, nice mirror finish on the frets. Finally level. This is about the hardest job I've ever done. And let's hope whenever I put it back together that it indeed stays done. So um, I'll check back with you here once we get it back together. Hi everybody. What we're doing here is since Tusk nut is only made in a nine and a half inch radius. Um, we got our tusk nut on here and uh, in place, and we have to adjust with the fret file or the um, nut files. And I started in the center to get twenty thousandths, which is where you want it. Um, but you want it, um, you, you got to leave, you actually want 18 thousandths. So you have to leave some room for whenever you, the string tension gets on there and you get the right relief, that number will change and it will go down. So I'm shooting for 20 thousandths here, just under, you know, not under string just enough tension to break for the brake angle and um, once we get that radius then we'll go ahead and set everything up because at that point we should be pulled down to about mm, nine, 18 thousands 19 thousands uh, once we reach our radius so that's what we're doing right now boys and girls Okay, hi everybody. We've got our radius met. We got it strung up to tune. We're gonna let it sit overnight and then we're going to go ahead and do our intonation. Good evening everybody. We have finally got our Mexican Deluxe Fender Stratocaster completely set up. With the exception of we just have to take out our eighth inch spacer. We've got it intonated. We've got all the strings right down to 464. The frets have been polished. The nut has been installed so that there's a 12 inch radius in the nut, even though the nut uh, came to us as a nine and a half inch radius just had to fix that with files as if you recall well I don't know if I recorded this part because I thought I had started to record and realized that the red light wasn't on anyhow I started with the first two strings on the inside and used the file to bring them down using the uh, 20 thousandth um, feeler gauge then moved to the next two out did the same thing and to the next two out and did the same thing um, so when we got the neck relief set at um, our magic 
um, it um, everything sounds good. It frets everywhere, and when you do to get it as low as as we have it here, you will have some string buzz with it not being plugged in. But that's to be expected whenever you want it to get as low as it is with as bad as the neck was with the uh, the frets just in atrocious shape. So that is all sorted. The last thing I have to do is just check uh, pick up heights and then we're just going to call this done. So, oh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll videotape this coming undone here. So take off our protective tape it's holding our spacer in place now if you guys recall this was a brand new guitar for a dude. His wife bought it for him for Christmas. And it's a shame to say that the place that they bought it from, who claims to have a 50 some odd point check list that they do before the guitars go out the door, obviously wasn't done where this would have gone back to Fender. Um, the one thing I found out also is that the truss rod is mm, about an eighth of a turn from its furthest tightest point. So this, and it's set up with 942s, I think it is. Um, I threw the package away, but it's set up with a standard set of nines. Um, so the only thing we have to do now is release the pressure off of the um, the screws inside the cavity to allow this to fall away and that is not a screwdriver this this is a screwdriver so I imagine about one turn on each screw and this will probably just fall out of place leaving everything set where it's supposed to be still not come out comes okay now if we want to be absolutely sure we take a ruler and we want one eighth of an inch boom one eighth of an inch so we have a floating trim well you know it's actually not a tremolo bar or a tremolo system it's actually a vibrato arm much like a Bigsby much like a four or I'm sorry six uh, screw type bridge and truthfully even those hated Floyd Roy, Floyd Rose systems are really tremolo. They're not. Or they're not tremolo. They're um, vibrato systems. So 
I bet that's what Fender calls it. So, we'll just call it that. And now, for the coup de, de grace, we clip the strings because you never, ever, ever clip the strings until you are done. Because you never know when you have to go back and loosen something and you find yourself one string short of a full set. And my wife tells me that's what I am all the time. I am one string short of a full set. But that's okay because she loves me anyhow. Anyway. So, if you would like to follow me on the Facebook, and I can't even get in the camera. Well, you can look at my belly. You can follow me on the Facebook. You can follow me on the YouTube channel where this video will be. And um, if you have any questions, I will answer questions on either my Facebook channel, Stringman Guitars, or my uh, YouTube channel, Facebook or I'm sorry, um, YouTube, you, uh, cut, follow me on my um, YouTube channel, Stringman Guitars. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and bid you guys adieu.